back to my channel. My name is Adeni Kebabala and today we're going to look at the IELTS speaking part three and we're focusing on how to expand your answers. Okay, so how do you expand your answers to the questions in the IELTS speaking part three? So you know that part one focuses on slightly trivial questions. They could be about you, that's personal questions about your work, your family, your hobbies, interests and the like and sometimes you have questions about other people, maybe your friends or people in general, okay? Now part two is where you get to describe a person or a thing or an experience or a place or something like that. But in part three, what you have is a, um, it's like a discussion, okay, of part two, that's of, of a topic related to part two. For example, this is before me is the Cambridge IELTS um, book 13, and this is test four, speaking test four. Part three, the, the um, discussion topics are the internet and social media websites. Now, let me go back to part two. The question there was, describe a website you use that helps you a lot in your work or studies. Okay, so um, you said you should say what the website is, how often you use the website, what information the website gives you and explain how you work, how your work, sorry, how your work or studies would change if this website didn't exist. So let's have you might talk about um, WordPress, for example. I remember when I used to blog. So let's assume I talk about WordPress and everything I could do, the, thing, the themes and templates and, you know, all of those notifications and everything now. You know, going on to part three now, this, you know, this IELTS speaking part three, you are now looking at the internet in general and then, you know, it goes on to have um, social media websites. So there are three questions on the internet and then three questions on social media websites. Now, our goal is how to expand your answers. Normally, what we say is for part one, the IELTS speaking part one, don't just give a short answer, what they call the mono answer. Don't just say yes or say no. Um, like this one here says, um, are there many, I'm going to the part one now, are there many animals or birds where you live? You know, I can say yes or say no. Yes, they are, no, they aren't, something like that. But that's not enough for your part one. You need a second sentence to, um, you know, expand your response. So of course, where I live, <laughs> a few minutes ago, a bear was actually, you know, making so much noise. I call it noise because um, I know it was going to interfere with my video. <laughs> so, but let's assume I say, yes, there, there are a lot of birds in my area. There are a lot of animals. Okay, if I choose to go for animals, there are a lot of animals um, within my vicinity. I know that every morning at around 6.30 a.m. I see a squirrel or two squirrels or something like that. Now, the point is, you see, I'm trying to say more. I'm not just giving you that answer alone. I'm giving you more to expand it. That's how you do part one. But our goal is part three. In the case of the IELTS speaking part three, what you want to do is give your answer, okay, in one sentence. Give the reason for your answer in the second sentence. And if possible, give an example in your third sentence. This is what I learned. Okay, sorry about that noise. This is what I learned from the British Council educators on future than earlier in the year, okay? The best way to expand your answer is say the answer, say the reason for your answer, give an example to support your, you know, your answer. So let me ask these questions. I'm going to use the six questions in this part. The is test four in Cambridge IELTS book, um, book 13. So the first question here says, why do some people find the internet addictive? Okay, so my answer is, Certain individuals think that the internet takes so much of their time. Okay, so you see that this is a why question, it's a reason question. So some are going straight to the reason. Okay, it takes so much of their time. And so you find that some people wake up very early in the morning and they spend so many, you know, hours checking their mails or, you know, looking at videos, watching videos on Instagram or something like that. For example, I know a friend who, while we're serving, who would, um, you know, she would spend almost all her money on subscribing for certain data plans so that she could watch as many funny videos on Instagram so that she's just happy and all of that. Now, I know that was a freelance response, so a freestyle rather, a freestyle response. What I was trying to show you is your question requires a response. 
but don't just give that you know one response expand it okay make it make it wider because the more you can say the more vocabulary you use the more sentences you use and the more um the more of your speaking can be assessed okay so the more you say the more um examiners can assess as far as your you know your IELTS speaking is concerned so let's look at the next question what would the world be like without the end without the internet this is like you know asking my opinion what would the world be like without the internet if you ask me um it would be like you know um, being in the dark ages because somehow um, communication will be hampered you know we won't be able to talk with our friends and family the way we like especially when we live in different places for example my parents live in lagos and thanks to whatsapp and facebook you know i can always communicate with them i have family and friends you know outside nigeria and it's easy to communicate with them you know because of platforms like um, instagram and you know linkedin and the rest of it okay so you see that I did not just give the response of communication with the ampad. I talked about the benefit of WhatsApp and Facebook and then LinkedIn and Instagram. Okay, I just padded up the answer with examples, something substantial. Okay, that's how you expand your answers in the IELTS speaking part three. Let's look at the third question. Do you think that the way people use the internet may change in the future? Do you think that the way people use the internet may change in the future? I'm not exactly sure what kind of change is likely to occur, but I know that um, more and more people will depend on the internet for businesses, um, education, and the rest of it. For example, we know that um, this year, 2020, has you know um, brought a lot of changes, especially to education, business, and the, you know most part of the world, especially because of the coronavirus. So there's a lot of um, uh, dependence on remote working, remote education, remote learning and all of it. So I feel that going forward, there will be a lot of dependence on the internet and online transactions, online education and the like. Okay, how did that, how did that look? <laughs> how did that sound? Now the idea is, it was a do you think kind of question. So I tried to give you a reality. I didn't just say people will keep depending. On it, I said yes. This is the reality right now, and this is the possible reality later on. And you see that I even used the right tenses while I was speaking. So let's take the three questions under the social media websites section. <laughs> it's still part three. It's still IELTS speaking part three. So the first question here says, "What are the ways that social media can be used for positive purposes? What are the ways that social media can be used for positive purposes?" One way I think that you know social media platforms can bring about change in society is through um, uh, what do you call them um, support support groups for example for example we know that um, there are a lot of diseases around there are a lot of sicknesses and sometimes people who you know struggle with certain things even mental health in mental health issues for example people who struggle with these things tend to feel alone and um, you know separated from the world but with the internet with um you know with linkedin and um, instagram and other platforms you find that people never really have to feel alone there is this support you have people coming out to speak out more and you have others showing the support that these people need another way is through um, education you find that many of the things that people do not necessarily, necessarily learn in school you find that they learn these things on the internet for example um Breast cancer is not necessarily a topic that is fully addressed in secondary school. Where you find that when you have the breast cancer month, I think that was um, I think it was last month. You find that a lot of people are informed, and you know they have the information they need. So yes, these are two ways you can actually um, um, bring about positive changes in the society. Okay, so that was quite extensive, yeah. <laughs> but yes. Um, if, the, if the examiner does not interrupt you, good for you, but most likely somewhere in between the examiner would you know, tell you they have the answer already. But the point I'm trying to make is I didn't just want to say one thing and just say, okay, for education and for support, you know, I needed to, you know, build them up. I needed to expand them. Okay, so the next question there says, why do some individuals post highly negative comments about other people on social media? Hmm, that's a very realistic question 
Why do some individuals post highly negative comments about other people on social media? As far as I know, certain people who struggle with um, inferiority complex tend to um, project it on other people. So you find that despite not feeling good about themselves, they want others to feel terrible as well. So you find that some people just go about um, bullying others. I think it's called um, cyberbullying. You, you find that they say negative things like body shaming. They say things that make people feel bad about how they look or about how much they know. And some of these things can bring very devastating outcomes. So for me, it's go, it goes back to inferiority complex. When people don't feel good about themselves, they want others to feel terrible as well. Okay, so um, I tried to respond correctly to that based on what came to my mind and I didn't just talk at it, okay? I talked about cyberbullying, I talked about body shaming. These are like the real, the real um, things. This is about what we have in the world today. So um, I think that's it. You know, I just tried to give a realistic response based on what I know. And of course, if the question is asking about what you know, what you think, feel free to bring in what you know. Um, don't get lost. Just just, just let it flow, okay? Just let it flow. The final question. Do you think that companies' main form of advertising will be social media in the future? Do you think that companies' main form of advertising will be via social media in the future? Yes, I think that a lot of businesses and brands would use more social media channels to communicate with their you know, customers and target audience. And this because a lot of people use their phones, you know, most most of the time you find the young the old using their phones communicating with friends or reading something learning something many people just depend on their phones so nobody really pays so much attention to tv of course there are people who do but you have more emphasis on mobile gadgets telephones laptops and the rest of them so you find that companies who want to take advantage of this medium to reach out to people so because they know that their target audience can be found on instagram or twitter or Facebook or anywhere else, they would leverage these opportunities. Even YouTube is a valuable tool for you know marketing and the rest of it. So I'm, I'm positive that companies will take on social media platforms as their main avenue for branding or selling their products. <laughs> okay, that's about it. Um, I hope you learned from my responses. They weren't perfect, but the goal was to show you how to expand your answers in the IELTS speaking part three. So I hope that this has helped you. I hope that um, going forward, you would know how to say the right, you know, give the right responses when you do the IELTS speaking. As much as possible, don't just say one thing, just feel free and feel relaxed. I didn't write my responses anywhere. I'm saying them to you, you know, just as they're coming to my head so that you can see how spontaneous it can be. I'm not trying to rehearse it before you or make you look all perfect. It's important to keep it original, okay? So um, that's about it for today. Once again, I hope you enjoyed learning with me. Uh, my name is Adini Kebabalola, and um, don't forget that if you want to take the IELTS mock test, you can always visit the um, takehighelts.net website. You find the link in my description box. And then if you need to improve on your English, you can always visit um, EnglishNiger.com. Why does it look like I'm forgetting? <laughs> okay, so please check my description box so you find all the information you need. And if you need feedback for your IELTS writing, whether it's task one or task two, please send me an email to um, adenikembabalola at gmail.com. Once again, it's been a pleasure sharing with you. Do take care. Bye.